What is going on, you guys? My name is Hugh, and welcome to the final episode of Project Betty. Mike, you know what to do? Cue the music and the awesome intro. So the first mod we get the first thing I want to do is get some we So the first thing I want to do is get some brand new wheels for the Yay Take five Boy So the first thing I want to do is get some brand new wheels and tires for Betty. Um, as you've seen in the previous video, which I'll leave up here in the eyeball, I did reveal the wheels early to you guys, but I didn't show you what it looked like on the car. I've been trying to hide it from you for a long time. The wheels I went with, if you guys don't know, um, are Kona's... <laughs> Kona, yeah, I bought, a car, I bought a car. It's a Kona's Egg, you moron. Uh, yeah, I bought Kona's Egg wheels. Yeah, that's... That's... Yeah, my cut that out. And I went with the Falcon Performance tires. They also are really good for all season. And I didn't know that because I thought they were just strictly performance. But as I was driving around in the rain and in and out of heat, they're pretty good in the rain. They are very grippy too, especially on wet roads. So I'll leave the wheels and the tires in the description below. If you guys want to go check them out, I got all my wheels and tires from the boys over at Fitment Industries, which were super, super helpful, super supportive. Every time I post a picture on Instagram, they liked it. Every time I talked to them, they were super nice. Great, great customer service. Great prices, too. I didn't spend that much at all for these wheels and tires. I got a super, super bad-ass deal on these. I'll leave also Fitment Industries' YouTube channel down in the description below. I've been following their stuff for a while. They are super, super awesome, guys. They are absolutely hysterical. So if you guys are interested in following the Fitment Industry Boys, I'll leave their channel down in the description below, and I'll leave their website as well. Let's go ahead and jump into the past and put those super, super mint Koenig Oversteers on with the brand new Falcon Performance tires. Boom! Alright, so we just made it to the garage. I'm literally just about to step out and get these tires and wheels mounted, but first... We need to get those stickers off. You can't ride around with stickers on the new tires, because that looks stupid. Now, in case you guys are wondering, before I take all these stickers off, these are brand new Falcon Tires Zenith FK510s. And it's the same factory fitment, although mine are 215s instead of uh, 225s. So we did the extra width because of how much wider the uh, Koenig wheels are. But my current wheels are 17 by 7.5, whereas the Koenigs are 17 by 8. So we had to go a little bit extra thickness here. So instead of 215, it's 225. Just like fill in that little bit of gap and uh, that little bit of tire stretch, which I didn't want to do. Got that? So if you want to get a pair of these, I'll leave a link in the description below. These are really, really good performance tires, but also really good daily tires too. So I wanted something that was the best of both worlds of both daily driving and performance. Also, these are way lighter than the ones I have in my car, which are Falcons. All right, let's finish getting these stickers off. Done! Alright, so next thing we gotta do, let's get all these wheels out of the boxes. Okay, so it looks like I got all the wheels fitted in there, so that's pretty much good to go. Close this, don't need that. Oh, okay, so all the wheels are fitted into the car, now we need to figure out where we're gonna put the top tires. Yeah, we need to find a better way of doing that. Okay, we need a better way of putting these things together. So I'm gonna do one of my world famous magic tricks for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and try to work as much as I can of my muscles to put this tire, to put this wheel in this tire. <laughs> the other way around. Ready for this? All right, I'm gonna, I gotta get in position here. This is the biggest magic trick I've ever did, guys. You ready for this? One, two, go! Well, damn, your boy is stronger than he looks. 
Ja, okay, ja, danke. So we got all four wheels on. It looks super sick, but you guys will have to wait till the end for the sub dab the bed. You spit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna show you guys at the end of the video what literally everything looks like. We got a couple more stuff we gotta do, but for now, all four wheels fit, all four wheels work. They look great. The fitment is on par but you guys have to see once we get all the other stuff in the car. So, moving on to the next part of the project. Whoa, okay, so now we're in the past again. Wait a minute, we're in the future. Where, what time is it? What year is it, Mike? Oh, is it? Oh, okay, well. Time traveling sucks, guys, I'll tell you that much. But now we got the wheels on and the new tires on those wheels as well. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> Trying to get. So now we got the new wheels and tires on the car. It's time to move over to suspension. Now I know what you guys are thinking. I did get a comment of uh, a subscriber um, saying, well, what was wrong with the uh, springs that you have, the lowering springs? And honestly, there's nothing wrong with the Godspeed lowering springs that I have. They're actually still really good and they still held up for, well, how long, when, when did I put those in? It was like a couple years ago or something. But those springs are still really good. Now, mind you, <laughs> you're gonna watch the, the series of events when <laughs> putting these coilovers in. It was hysterical trying to get this coilover set in. These coilovers are from a company called Rev9. I didn't know, I've seen them before on Amazon and eBay, but I didn't know what the company was about or where they were from. I just knew the name, Rev9, that was it. And apparently this company was actually based in Japan and most of their kits, their suspension kits, and I guess they sold some other parts like sway bars and stuff, most of their stuff were for 90 to 93 Miatas. And I guess over time the company expanded from Japan to Europe and now to the US. So now they make a multitude of different suspension kits for a bunch of different Asian type cars and even muscle cars, domestic cars too. I had no idea who Rev9 was until when I started using their product now, and I have been using these core lowers for like a couple of months now. And I'll tell you one thing, these coilovers are super, super comfortable. There's plenty of adjustment. The dampening on is ridiculous. You can do whatever you want with it. They weren't even that expensive either. But if you guys want to check them out, make sure they fit your car. Don't use the same one that I use for my car unless you have a Veloster. But if you want to check out the company, I'll leave their website down in the description below. But you can literally find their coilovers anywhere. You can find it on eBay, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it on their own personal website. So let's go ahead and jump to the past and throw those bad boys in. And, uh, oof. The process of getting those in, and I will tell you one thing, it is hilarious because there was uh, no instructions. You keep that in mind when you're putting these in. Let's jump in the past. All right, so we're back in the garage again. I just got the package in for the coilovers right here next to me. I'm super excited to open this box up for you guys. Let's go ahead and get that pocket knife and crack this baby open. Look, a box within a box. Oh my god, that's heavy. Ooh. 
These look pretty. Oh, wow. Damn, son. Okay, okay. What do we got? These are probably the rear ones, yeah? Ooh. So these are for the rear, I think. Because uh, I'm assuming it comes with everything you need. It also comes with the shanks, or whatever you want to call it, the shims to adjust the uh, coils here. That's some high quality stuff right there. Oh, that looks sick. I like the color. I think this is the only color they have, which is this really dark green color. It's pretty sick, dude. And it's got a dampener up here and a softener, so you can be able to uh, adjust it however you want. If you want it harder for a harder ride or softer or softer ride. And it's got a camber adjuster too here. I think the height level is going to be three up and three down from stock. I'm assuming that's correct, but I'm not sure. Um, the first thing we got to do is uh, we got to take off the old ones, which I still have the Godspeed lowering springs in the car still. Um, and we need to line them up exactly to these. Or no, line these up to the ones that are in the car. And then we can just kind of adjust it from there. Let me go ahead and unbox the rest of this stuff. Um, and let's go ahead and take the old coils out. And then plop these in here. Uh oh, I didn't film. Wanna try it again? I'll just take it. I, you want me to take it or not? Like, there, it's rolling. You look Spencer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> That's all you have to say is, oh god. Oh god. Oh god. The gap is going to be worse. Oh god, Timmy's big sausage got in Susie's kitty. <laughs> Damn, that's going to look so good when it settles tomorrow. They're about an inch and a quarter up, so when that settles it'll be back to normal probably. It'd be like an inch. Like exactly. Hell yeah. But at least it'll be more softer. Because the whole point of the coilovers is that the ride will be softer. It, it won't be stiff. She won't bottom out anymore. So hopefully we fix all that because the lowering springs didn't do a very good job as far as comfortability and stability. Because she was bottoming out a lot in the front. Let's go tackle the rears, get all that settled. Um, and then we'll see what she looks like on all fours. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh wow, actually look at this. If you go like this with it, that compression is terrible. That's, that's just bad. That's like, if I can do that by hand, that's just scary. It's just small dust. All right, ready? Yeah, try it. <laughs> oh my God, what the heck? How did we do this last time? Oh shit, this is gonna be sketch. Ow, my head. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck fell on my head? On oh, my camera. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. I hope you guys are seeing that. I cannot. Oh god, dude, the whole car wobbling is just like freaking freaking me out. Alright, so I realized why we were struggling. It's because the jack was on the suspension piece. No, no, the main no, no. brace. So we were standing there for like 30 minutes like ah, drop on the wheel, no you jump on the wheel, can you pull it out, no you pull it out, you push down, you jump on the wheel, just yeah. stand on it, no, and then all of a sudden we're like, well why don't we just move the jack out of the way, oh, well. what was that, I'm okay, <laughs> well yeah, don't, don't do that, don't do that, there we go, that's all the way in, so. Is it? Where's the wheel look like in the Uh, you're good there. Now, here's the real question. Do you want this at the top or this part at the top? No, yeah, leave the logo on the bottom, dude. So we're going from this turd to this beefy look at This mother <laughs> All right, which way? Uh, logo down. Aggression. Oh. Watch out, you're gonna get ran over. Oh shit! Ah. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so apparently after we lowered the car, she has this weird function where she actually does a little bit of a lowrider stance. I don't know why that's there. Dan, do you have any ideas? No. Are you sure? I have no idea. Okay. So I'm gonna be wearing your hair hard to get a seizure. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty. I need the nut, please. I don't know, where is it? Sander, do you have a nut? I have Alex. many nuts. Alex, give me a nut. That I need it. Well, you're the one that freaking impacted it off and it went wee! Oh yeah, that's right, it went over here. <laughs> All right, so now we're back in the future. Haha, -ha, see, I got that right. We're not in the past now, are we, Mike? You're a dick bag and a half, you know that? So after I got those coilovers in, everything was fine. It rode really nice, but like I said, there was no instructions because I wasn't sure how we were going to put it in. Even Xander asked, does this go this way? Does this have the logo? The logo needs to be facing out. And I was like, yeah, 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 it goes in like that. I was wrong. So apparently when I was trying to figure out how to put these in, both of us were trying to figure out how to put these coilovers in, I didn't know there was a tutorial video. There's because the first time I looked, there was no tutorial videos. There's no instructions online. There's no other reviewers. They look correct. Everything felt right, except there was some kind of 
noise going around in the back of the front of the suspension was fine the front suspension was perfect but there's something going on in the back where it's like and i'm sitting there going what the heck is that and then a month goes by after using these coilers and i'm sitting there still trying to figure out what is going on what is that sound i can't fi and i look underneath the car nothing there okay so that's incorrect why is the huh within a month of using these things and was driving me flipping nuts dude it was driving me nuts with this ding 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 noise going on in the back and sure enough there was one video of this guy, I don't know how old he was, but it was like a pixelated video or something like that, which I'll leave down there. Apparently, I had the whole system in the rear upside down. Yeah, yeah. Right? We had to flip the whole system upside down. And I did not realize that there was some kind of guide pin in the rear suspension where you have to slide the piston through that guide pin and then slide the bolt in then put the rest of it together and after that it was fine so let's jump in a pass shall we all right a little bit behind the scenes uh, situation here these were upside down and i didn't realize this until literally several days later a month or two later when all this stuff was uh, filmed this is upside down you can go over here that is not upside down. You see that? That is how it's supposed to be. That's a no-no. That is correct. And as you can see, I put my lowering springs back in because I keep thinking that if it was the freaking springs bouncing around, but it's not the springs. That was the problem. I gotta get my damn eyeballs checked. Everything is ass backwards for me. I might even leave the lowering springs in there. I like it. It's like a little hybrid coilover setup. Plus, uh, it saves the future in case if uh, those other ones start going. This is actually kind of a smarter idea, just saying. Now, see how this has a little bit of a, uh, a guide, as you will? That is how you put it in. Now, I didn't know that, but this is something to you guys, that if you're going to put a piston in this car, use this guide, this little hole right here. Now, I didn't realize that. <laughs> and again, I, I screwed up. Oh, there we go. I got it. Yep. See that? It's supposed to slide right in that little guide there. That's way better than hearing it go. So, just a note for the future. See? Wasn't that fun? Yeah. Ya boy's a dumbass. But once that got that stuff settled up and finally the noise is gone. Uh, I'm, ser I'm serious. That This little ding a ling noise was driving me nuts for like the past month that I was having those coilovers in. It was... Oof, I was really about to go insane. But thanks to my quick wits and smart ass dumbassery, I may <laughs> make shift my own coilover setup. <laughs> I did it, boss. So I call it the coilover hybrid kit. Yeah, that's a thing now. So now that we got all that stuff, that's pretty much all I wanted to do for this car was just some good suspension and new tires and brand new wheels. Just to finish off this build series, it's time to reveal everything to you guys. Let's go jump on the past and showcase every... What? Oh. Oh, that's right. Um. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to do the showcase. Because, uh... Hmm. Let's jump in the past one more time, but it's not a showcase. I'll let past me explain what happened. It's, uh, it's not fun. Well, bad news, guys. So, I was on my way to see my grandma. I'm all the way up here in Fort Lauderdale, almost in Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, she caught fire. I'll have, I have pieces of it here, hold on. Here. She caught fire, so either I hit something on the road, or the, the engine completely overheated. Boosh! And now I have chunks of metal in my hand, proving that she is done. That's my mom back there. So, 
block is done. It caught fire all the way up in here. This was on fire. This was on fire. Okay. Because all, all the oil exploded and underneath the car, just boosh, and then it just started catching fire. The only thing I saw was smoke coming out of the hood. And I actually burned myself a little bit trying to get the hood off, trying to cool her down. I, everything, she was great. It was a three hour trip and I just had to say something. So, she's, uh, I have this gentleman here helping me here. Thank you so much. She's uh, she's dead. We're done. I'm just gonna have to finish the journey back to Fort Lauderdale because I can't go all the way back home. It's two hours away. We're only 45 minutes from where I'm supposed to go. But yeah, she's done. Tuna fish can finally it smells like tuna. Got no clearance. Everything's meant to happen. No. I think That's what I thought I did. Hit a rock? No, yeah. yeah either that, because I've. Up. Some, either something went under or just the engine overheated and just. Dead. I'm so sorry, Betty. Well, just got back home. It's a little, uh, a little lonely in here. But hopefully she makes it back home. The gentleman that was picking her up was super cool. He's a big-time car guy. And I saw some of the other cars he's got on there. He's got a cool setup on there from other customers. So hopefully we see her tomorrow and uh, keep you guys posted. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of comments saying, well, what happened? What uh, Can you do a better explanation of what went wrong? And I can tell you one thing I have no idea. Because as I was driving, the only thing I felt was thunk. Like, not a big jolt, but it was like thunk. I was like, what the heck was that? And all my gauges, my RPM, my miles went down. Like, I'm like, uh-oh. I'm like, well, that's weird. And I kept trying to throttle. She wasn't moving. And then all of a sudden I start seeing white smoke coming out of the top of the hood. And thankfully I had those vents on the top so I could see it. I was like, oh, okay, I got to get off the highway. I pulled off. I immediately started putting the fire. I could have filmed it, but I didn't. I was using my phone for navigation. So I immediately put the fire out and I did kind of cook myself a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. I cooked myself just a little bit there. Trying to put the fire out, just like, ah, 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 ah. But then I was like, stupid, water. I have a little thing, of, a bottle of water. So I just, Shh. and then all of a sudden, whew. Dang it, it came back. And I was like, ah. But thankfully, there was a guy who had a trailer. It was right behind me, as you saw in the footage. It was right behind me. And then he comes up, he pulls over, he sees that I'm trying to struggle, put the fire out. The engine cover was still on fire. I couldn't put it out. So I was like, chucked it to the side, screw it. I'm going to get a new one, not a big deal. And then he comes in with this giant cooler and just, just puts out that fire. The whole engine cooled down. I was like, oh, thank goodness, dude. If it wasn't for that guy, he saved my ass and Betty. 
because that fire could have been way worse. Even if it was small, which it was, it was pretty small. That guy is a legend. He saved me and the car. It could have been way worse than that. But as of right now, I have no idea what I what went wrong. Or the only thing that caught fire was this little. I guess it's a high pressure fuel pump, which I'll throw the image up here for you guys. And I circled it in purple for you. I don't. I guess that's what it is. That's what Xander says it is. But that was the only thing in that engine bay that caught fire. Nothing else. Battery still works. All the electronics still work. She can still get in neutral. I can still move her around. I don't know if she cranks. She would probably crank over. But there's no oil in the car, and even if I put oil in the car, it's just going to come right back out because there's a hole somewhere in the block. So you guys can leave your theories down in the comments below what you think it could have been. I know there was a recall on this specific engine. I don't know if it's just the turbo model or the NAs. Hopefully it's still fixable, which I think it is. It's, it doesn't seem that bad, but then again, I don't know until I look at her. And you guys will see that video pretty soon. Um, I don't know about next week, so I'm going to be filming it next week with my buddy Xander. We're both going to sit there for almost whole, a whole day trying to diagnose what went wrong. But the good news is I have footage of her being back home. Uh, the guys who took care of her, who towed her back from where we are in Fort Lauderdale, they were super cool. Like They were very, very supportive, very, very nice guys, and they took very, very good care of her too. But let's go ahead and cut to the past and let me finish out the video for you guys. Let me get on this side so you guys can. There she is, guys. Not too bad. It did a very good job. Still in one piece. So, we're just gonna try to figure out how to get her off the trailer and, uh, Get her back in the garage. Us. Stop that. Come on, come on. What's the problem with it? Blew up. Uh, Caught fire. Apparently the you didn't like that store? I want to. She turns on like battery wise and everything, but I don't know if I want to crank her. She has no oil right now. Oh, okay. I got a hole where the oil came out of. Oh. So we gotta find out if that's fixable or not. You're going to you're doing. Yeah, I'm gonna get some here. No no no. This is nice. Yeah man. That's yeah. what I do. Vlog everything. Okay, I see. Appreciate it, dude. And uh, let me get your signature. What was the name? Uh, Hugh. Thank you so much. Thank you. No yep, problem. Good really appreciate you. it, dude. Yeah, good luck. All right. She's back home again. I'm gonna push her a little further back because she's a little bit too close to the garage. But these guys are super awesome. Um, I'll leave the company name down in the description below. So if you guys need your car towing in case if it blows up. I'll leave their stuff down there for you guys to go check out. <sighs> what an episode, man. Not expecting that at all. But she's back home. And I'm very happy. These guys took very good care of her. She's a little dusty. That's not that big a deal. Wax her or something. So, for the time being, that's the end of uh, Project Betty. Me and Xander are going to get up one day. Maybe a separate video of um, us diagnosing the car. Um, it'd be like a total separate video, like a vlog with me and Xander, maybe next week. Well, probably by the time you're seeing this video, it's postponed, so it's the week after this has been all recorded, so you get what I mean. For those of you who don't know, my grandmother helped contribute getting this car for me. It's between my dad and my grandma, but my gram paid off this car. So I know I owe nothing on Betty absolutely nothing and i wanted to go see her because uh, she was in the hospital she wasn't feeling well she wasn't eating when i went there she was okay you know she was getting a little bit more lively she was eating a little bit more um she was cracking jokes so which was good so i was glad that i still got to see my grandmother because of betty the, that's the reason why i'm never going to get rid of this car if you guys think i'm going to get rid of this car because she blew up you're dead wrong she's sticking around i'm not getting rid of this car because 
I got some big plans. If the engine doesn't work out in this car, then I am proud to announce stage three, which you will see soon. Stage two is done. This is the final episode for stage two. But stage three, whole of the ball game. And I'll see you guys in that series. If you like this video, be sure to give it a fat thumbs up. Pray for Betty down in the comments below. Hashtag pray for Betty. I would really appreciate it a lot. And I'll see you goons in stage three. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you.